Yo guys, welcome back to another video, wherever you are, special greetings to you. And don't forget, if today is your first time, please do me a favor by subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit on the notification bell whenever you drop video, you can also get it and watch. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how the EU has introduced the vaccine passport, also known as the digital green certificate and also france set to put new restrictions to avoid another general lockdown and the president of tanzania has also died so guys without wasting much time let's do this thing together yeah guys as i said before the president of the european commission has finally introduced the vaccine passport or the digital green certificate and it is going to issued or it is going to be given by the authorities of your country which will allow you to travel to another country when one is having or if someone is having this vaccine passport what it means is that that person has been vaccinated or that person is currently having the negative of the COVID-19 so that you can travel from one country to another without having any problem and this vaccine passport will be containing your basic details and also the language of your country and English English language which is going to explain the reason why you are having the card and it is going to be given to you by the authorities of your country so that is how the vaccine passport or the digital green certificate is going to be functioning in Europe so guys let's go and watch that video when we are back we will give you the rest of the update so stay tuned getting Europe moving again and keeping its borders open safely that's how EU chief Ursula von der Leyen presented the plus points of the so-called vaccine passport, or as it's officially known, the digital green certificate. It shows or states whether the person has either been, either been vaccinated or a recent uh, negative test or has recovered from COVID and thus antibodies. Secondly, um, the certificate will make sure that the results or what it shows, the data and the minimum set of data, are mutually recognized um, in every member state. The pass itself would be distributed by national authorities or health services. It would contain basic personal information in English and in the language of the country of issue, as well as a QR code. The document should be free of charge, with the EU providing support for member states to develop and implement that technology. The digital pass has been applauded by some as a way to get tourism back up and running this summer. Yet it's also raised ethical and logistical questions regarding data protection and equal access to travel. Yet the EU was swift to remind Europeans that their fundamental right to move freely between member states was not under threat. The digital pass would simply facilitate travel, eradicating the need for quarantine protocols or further tests. For now, only the AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer-BioNTech and Johnson & Johnson vaccines would be authorised for the certificate. Indeed, von der Leyen underlined that with a third wave of COVID-19 in our sights, widespread vaccination is the very best strategy on the road to return. I hope you have seen the video so that is how the vaccine passport is going to be functioning and now let's move on to the next story in france they have said to put another new restrictions to avoid going to another general lockdown citizens are saying the covid 19 in france now is like yo-yo today you are in lockdown tomorrow you are free the next day you are in lockdown but the government is saying he don't have any option than to put more restrictions so that the country will avoid itself for going to another lockdown so this is what is coming from france and they are set to put the new restrictions so that if they are out we will officially come and publish it to you guys again they are doing all these things to avoid going to another lockdown as you guys know how lockdown is very stressful so guys let's go and watch that video when we are back we will give you the rest of the update so stay tuned as new coronavirus cases rise sharply the french government is taking action we decided this morning that extra measures will need to be taken in a number of regions. 
Dans les prochaines Over the heures, next hours, we'll be speaking with local councillors in the Ile-de-France and Hauts-de-France regions, as well as neighbouring areas, to discuss the current situation. The announcement paves the way for more curbs in the Paris region. Residents say they aren't thrilled with the prospect of another lockdown. When you live in Paris and have a small apartment, it's more complicated than when you have a house in the countryside. There's a feeling of, I work during the week and then I stay cooped up in a hamster box or a fishbowl all weekend. One day you're told that you'll be in lockdown, the next day it's lifted. It's like a yo-yo. But with more than 400 cases per 100,000 residents, the healthcare system in the Paris region is in crisis mode. The intensive care units are at capacity, forcing the government to transfer patients to other hospitals around the country, a decision that many patients' families have opposed. The virus is not under control. There are as many patients in intensive care now as there was during the peak of the second wave, when it was starting to go back down. The time has come for more restrictions because it's not at all starting to go back down. We're instead in a phase of acceleration. The government has ruled out closing schools. The rest of the new restrictions will be announced by the Prime Minister on Thursday. Yeah, guys, I hope you have seen the video. That is what is also coming from the side of France. And now let's move on to the next story. The president of Tanzania, who is John Magu Fuli. This man was 61 years. They said this man has lost his life. Rest in peace to this president of Tanzania. Just recently, we lost Hamed Bakayoko, who was the prime minister of Cote d'Ivoire. Rest in peace to these leaders. May their gentle soul rest in peace and, and rest in peace to all gone souls. This man happens to be the first African president who rejected the AstraZeneca vaccine. The president of Tanzania is the only African president who has rejected the AstraZeneca vaccine. You know the AstraZeneca vaccine, they have shared it to 22 African countries, but Tanzania refused to receive this AstraZeneca vaccine. They said the AstraZeneca vaccine was not something that can solve their COVID-19. So they rejected it. So guys, let's go and watch that video. When we are back, we will give you the rest of the update. So stay tuned. Thank you for the good job. The last time John Pombe Magafuli was seen in public, he was carrying out official duties and not wearing a mask. Not long into his second term in office, he suddenly vanished from public sight. After three weeks of speculation came the announcement from Vice President Samia Salu Hassan on state television. We lost our leader, President of the Republic of Tanzania, the Honorable Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magafuli, who parted this life from heart complications in hospital in Dar es Salaam. Rumors had been swirling that Magafuli had sought treatment for COVID-19, largely fed by opposition leader Tundulisu and Kenyan media. The government denied the reports and arrested at least four people who'd speculated about his health on social media. In all this government, no one wears a mask, including me. It proves that there is no coronavirus and God loves this nation. President Magufuli was more than a coronavirus skeptic. His government stopped sharing data with the World Health Organization last year and declared Tanzania COVID-free through divine intervention. The official tally still stands at 509 cases and 21 deaths all these months later. He displayed a disregard for health advice, focusing on prayer and local remedies, while also claiming the vaccines were dangerous. This drew condemnation from the WHO and the Roman Catholic Church. Magafuli's COVID denial had turned into policy for a nation of 60 million. The ministry has no plans to receive vaccines for COVID-19, which are already in use in other countries. The WHO has repeatedly asked the government to adopt preventative measures, such as wearing face masks, to start reporting cases, and to share data. Foreign embassies began warning of a significant increase in the number of COVID-19 cases that could overwhelm Tanzania's limited hospital capacity. In late February, Magifuli finally began to change his tone, warming to the idea of wearing locally made face masks. That was just days before a shocking press conference from his finance minister, Philip Mapango, which was called to address rumors that he had died of coronavirus. Tanzania has refused to join the COVAX program, which has delivered millions of doses to 22 African countries. 
It will be up to Samia Salu Hassan to decide whether it remains an outlier when it comes to protecting its population and that of neighboring countries. Andrew Chappelle, Al Jazeera. Yes, I hope you have seen the video, so that is how it also happened in Tanzania and rest in peace to this their president and rest in peace to all gone so so guys this is the update i have for you today the name still remains official cracker on youtube official cracker on facebook official underscore cracker one on instagram you can follow me over there and we can vibe till we meet again in the next video please stay safe and stay blessed peace out